there have been so many headlines lately about Google's Nano Banana essentially making Photoshop obsolete. With the photos it's able to generate and manipulate and combine different photos, making product photos, making photos of people, it can do so many different things that are really quite impressive that have never been possible before. So that makes you wonder, why would you learn Photoshop when you could instead just use natural language and talk to Google's Nano Banana? So in this video, I want to not only tell you what it is, show you some examples, but also give you a step-by-step -step tutorial of how how to actually use nano banana and the good thing is it is free to use of course if you have the pro plan you'll have unlimited access but even the free version does get to play around with nano banana so getting started this is something that you can access in several different places you could go to google's ai studio or really what i like to do is just go to gemini.google.com and as long as you're signed in it should look something like this now right now you can see nano bananas popping up at the top this is otherwise known as gemini 2.5 flash image and if you click on that i mean it'll just tell you to try it now it'll give you a little prompt i'm not going to do that you can click on tools click on create images so that should be highlighted in the bottom one thing you want to make sure of however uh, is on the top left you want to make sure that you're choosing flash not pro uh, that's going to be how you can actually use nano banana so i have five examples i want to go over that demonstrate very different aspects of this different things you can do and i think even if one is really appealing to you the other four you may not have realized you could do with this so starting off with the very first one i have these two images one is me holding a peach and the other one is just a pair of earbuds and maybe i want to change that so i'm holding the earbuds in the image it's something that on photoshop you definitely could do it would take a long time to do though so if i just drag these two images over one thing that Nano Banana is supposed to be very good at is preserving image characteristics when combining. So it doesn't look like an AI combination of the two. It'll match the lighting, it'll match everything, but it should still look like my face and you should still be able to read the Bose logo on there. So we can give more complicated prompts. I'm gonna start off with something very simple. Just replace the peach I'm holding in front of the tree with the Bose earbuds case from the second image. Let's see what it's able to do. And you'll also notice, by the way, while you can kind of do th similar things on like ChatGPT and other platforms, they do take a really long time. And Gemini is not like the fastest. Like I think there's still room for improvement here, but you'll see it's still fairly quick. So, all right, there we go. We've got the image here um, and you can see, let's look at the first image, let's check them out. So if we look at the first image, and we look at the second image of the Bose earbuds, just so you guys can see what they look like. And then if we go and actually look at the combined image, you'll see uh, it did a good job of like that is still me preserved the image very well and now i am holding the earbuds case that's actually quite accurate you'll see in the bottom corner they do add the little gemini logo there just to indicate it was ai generated but i would say that is quite impressive this is a really silly little basic example but nonetheless uh, I think it's really impressive that you don't have all the AI recreation where the face looks different uh, and just trying to rebuild the whole photo. It actually is combining the two images. So that's kind of the first example, just combining two basic images. Now let's go on to example number two. For example number two, I want to reorient images. So this is something that is really quite interesting you're able to do. So I'm going to go with this little Yeti, this little Yeti backpack right here. And let's say, please create an image of the side view. So let's also just make it kind of a product image here. So we want it to turn it sideways and we want to put it like on a mountain or something like that. So this is something that in the past you really couldn't do with Photoshop, like creating a side view. You pretty much have to draw it out entirely, but this is able to kind of imagine what the backpack looks like based on what the straps look like there. So this is how the backpack looks. And I mean, as humans, like we're able to kind of understand what it might look like on the side, but let's see what it came up with here. So if we go down, this not only looks very realistic of the background and everything, it has the shadow. Shadow, uh, the strap even has like a very accurate shadow there but this I would say is almost definitely what it's going to look like from the side I think they did a very very good job here and again this is in my opinion just really mind-blowing that you're able to do this considering the state of the technology even just like one or two years ago and let's kind of continue with that example and maybe reorient something else let's go with uh, here's like a picture of a sloth and let's say please Try that let's just try something this is going to be a lot trickier you can see an animal right it looks a little different let's see if it's able to recreate this from the side so the backpack i mean i think that was a fairly easy one but definitely did a good job let's see what it looks like on this all right so here is the original image and now the new image eh, it definitely is a little bit more to the side but it's definitely not the full side like i was looking for so we can actually do some modifiers here let's ask it to uh now let's say even further to the side let's just tell it to rotate 90 degrees see what that looks like 
<laughs> all right, it might have rotated the wrong 90 degrees there. I found in my experimenting with Nano Banana that while well, it's really good at creating some images, sometimes it just doesn't do what you tell it to do. Like if you want to move text or if you want to reorient things or move them around the photo, sometimes it just doesn't do it. It'll tell you it's doing it. It'll keep giving you basically the same image and it just doesn't do things sometimes. But when it works, it, it works well. So let's go into example number three now. We're going to combine many different images in one. So I showed you how to replace something in one image with another image, but let's add, uh, let's say six different things and combine them all into one image. All right, so let's say combine these images into one realistic photo uh, with the guy, me, um, holding a peach, also holding a basket of peaches and make it like a midday photo. Hold on, I had more in that prompt at a picnic table and I want it to be at that little beach on the right, but instead of sunset, I want it midday so the lighting looks better. So let's see what it's able to do here. All right, so it has, honestly, it did a good job of almost everything except for it doesn't have me like that that it definitely missed but the other things you'll see it does preserve the characteristics and they do look very realistic like the little sloth stuffed animal exactly the same the yeti backpack exactly the same the mesa chips they also look exactly the same the basket looks different that's definitely not me um, and the earbuds also look different and it is at a beach but we don't see that palm tree so again this is where like sometimes photoshop is still going to be significantly better like you can do things yourself that you want but let's say you're on a marketing team and you have a lot of products and you want to have them in like one cool image somewhere or maybe you have an image and you're missing a product in there you have a new product and you want to just like swap it out with something else in the image nano banana could definitely do a pretty good job of that it's not perfect though and this is where i think you'd want to download this go to photoshop and actually make it happen uh, yourself if there's something that's missing from this image but even the shadows i think that looks pretty good there so let's go on to what are we on example number four now is modifying an image of a person so say me for example so i have an image of me let's say make the photo warmer and add a mustache this is a fairly simple one. We were kind of able to do this before with a lot of other ones, but they were really bad at preserving the characteristics of the actual person in the photo. So a lot of times the face would look a little different. A lot of times like just wouldn't, it'd be kind of uncanny, like it'd look AI generated. So this, from what I've noticed, more times than not doesn't look as AI generated. Like they do a pretty good job of actually just adding a mustache and, and it looks pretty realistic. So let's see what, it, all right. So the photo originally, let me show you what that looks like. Uh, definitely a little cooler than I would like. So that's why I said warm it up. And then the new photo, let's go back, go to new one. Um, the photo, it is definitely still me. It didn't really change that. The mustache, <laughs> I don't know, guys, should I go full stash like that? Uh, it warmed up the photo as well. So the editing on that was quite accurate. This is, this is impressive. This is definitely impressive. But let, let's kind of go a little further here and say now, actually, let's, let's edit this one. We could either do modifiers down here, but I always find more success working off the original image. Um, let's say, and put me in a diner. Let's see if you can put me in a diner, 90 style sitcom, just be a little bit more specific and see if it's still able, able to preserve, like looking like me. All right. So eh, this one doesn't even look like very 90 style sitcom. It looks like me a little bit, but I think we're deviating. This is starting to get into like the limits of what this is able to do. It looks kind of like me, but at the same time, it looks like maybe my long lost brother. That's probably how I describe that one. But the rest was pretty good. That's definitely a diner. Um, I don't know if that's 90s style, but honestly, it's kind of something I would wear today. Anyway, that's off topic. Let's go into the fifth and final example. So I have a screenshot from Google Maps here, and I'm going to draw on it. Let's see if we can draw with like a thick marker here. All right, so now what I'm going to do, this is pretty interesting. And I've seen people do this in several different examples. Let's see how well it actually works here. So we're in front of the Waterloo Bridge in London. Uh, I drew a little arrow to show where I'm actually looking at. And let's go back to Gemini. So let's, sorry, Mac. Let's say don't save. Go back to here. And let's say what would the view, let's say what would someone see? Say what would someone see if they were standing at the tip of the red arrow? This is something that I've seen in the past where, like I said, I think like the example Google gave was um, like the San Francisco Bridge or the Bay Bridge, I think, um, or the Golden Gate Bridge is what it was. And they just like pointed and they said, what would you what would you see here? And it made an image that that looked pretty realistic. So let's see if it's able to do it in other spaces. Ah, man, it copied the wrong images. No, there's no red arrow there. OK, let me let me modify that. All right, so I'm going to do this in a new chat just because I accidentally put the wrong image without the arrow there. So again, back to the new chat, you can click on tools, click on create images. So that should be highlighted in the bottom. Now I'm going to paste that image and let's just say, what would someone see? All right, okay, now in a new tab, just for reference, let's say Waterloo Bridge. 
So it should look something like this. Like we should see the Waterloo Bridge there, kind of little arches. Let's see if they're able to do that. No, it definitely missed on this one. So it has a bridge. Honestly, that's a pretty sick bridge. That is definitely not the bridge. That's not the view. I mean, it tried. It kind of did like an AI generation of this. And you know, maybe it's going to look like that in another century. Who knows? Eh. So yeah, Gemini missed on this. I think maybe if there's like a lot of street views, they might be able to do it a little bit better. Um, it's not super off like that. That's convincing. It kind of looks like it could be London, but uh, it is it is in fact not the bridge I was looking at. So to recap, what is Nano Banana? Nano Banana is Google's Gemini 2.5 flash image, essentially the ability to take images input uh, and then recreate them as an output as if you were using Photoshop. Uh, they can reimagine it at different angles, but it preserves the characteristics of the original image, whether that is text on products like this little Yeti product here or people, um, you know, the characters in a photo. So that again, still looks like me. It's also able to do some editing so like making an image warmer as I did before. So this one, if you remember that example, make an image warmer or cooler, uh, change the color tone, make it black and white. It's able to do that stuff and it's able to do it really with ease. But what it does it not do well? Well, it doesn't always get the people right. Like sometimes it just doesn't include a character where you want it to. It may be 80% right like this. I would say is 80% right. But the last 20% is going to be so hard to get it to actually do that. Like example, again, with the sloth, if you're like turn 90 degrees and like it just won't do that. Sometimes it's so close to getting it right and I know it's able to but it just doesn't understand the prompts and it won't get things perfectly and then lastly of course with that view from uh, the map sometimes it nails it like this one looks pretty good um, I don't know if the shard lines up right there in London but still sometimes it looks pretty good and sometimes as you saw in the most recent example it just imagines a completely new scene based on the map so still plenty of hallucinations but very very impressive technology in my opinion a huge leap forward in image editing and generation uh, using AI. So if you guys have any questions or thoughts or cool prompts you've used with Nano Banana, leave comments down below. I'll be reading all of them and I'll see you guys in the next video.